how can I kick off a whole bunch of select queries against Snowflake using Python and have them go asynchronously and then collect the results as soon as each one of them is done so that they're collected in the most efficient way. I'm your host Sean McKenzie and today we're going to talk about how to do asynchronous queries, select queries against Snowflake and how to check for a query results and then and then grab the ones that are done the soonest as soon as they're done and then uh, grab the other ones after so that it makes the most efficient use of our time. Now in this episode we're also using execute async which is a method that we can use in our Snowflake uh, connector for Python and uh, that's going to help us to kick off those queries all at the same time so that we can get those results. So without further ado, let's get to our queries. Are you a programmer looking for your next gig? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay, so we're going to start off here. I'll just start a new, a new file and, uh, and then I'll bring that over. I'm going to save that as uh, an asynchronous select, select asynchronous uh, file. And, uh, and then we can go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to import our select statements from uh, Excel today. Uh, many thanks to user request for this topic. This is actually a good one. Um, so we'll import our select statements from an Excel sheet and then uh, put those into pandas and then we're going to uh, go through each of the statements and we're going to execute those asynchronously against Snowflake. Um, using our connector here. So we can go ahead and uh, we'll do we'll create our data frame and we're just going to use uh, pandas uh, dot read Excel and I'll just put in the path to my Excel file here. Um, it is an XLSX file so in order to use that um, you do need to uh, put the open pie Excel in there that's the uh, engine um, since the native uh, read Excel only supports XLS files, which is a project that was uh, discontinued, and so the OpenPy Excel replaced that so that we could use our XLSX files. Uh, so here's my Excel file. You can see I've got a column called SQL, and I've got three queries in there. One is a bigger one, and the other two are are kind of little short ones that are on tables that you've seen in previous episodes. And, uh, and so I'll grab that data frame and then I'm just going to say the you know, queries is the length of that, of the data frame. Um, the SQL header will, will go into the header so we should get 0, 1, and 2 and the, the very first row, row 1 of, in the Excel actually becomes the header. Um, and so I'm going to print off the number of queries here. So uh, we've got the number of queries and, uh, and then I'm going to uh, just initialize a couple of lists here. I'm going to say a query uh, and a complete list. So we're going to have the same length of list um, and we're going to sort of record in the complete list when each one is completed. And so uh, I'll just go, you know, four item in range queries, um, a four, a four next loop here. Uh, we, we can go query append and then the item, which will be zero, one, two um, in this case. And uh, I'll do a complete append zero. So that's going to put a, uh, all zeros in the complete. It's going to have three, uh, three items in the, uh, in the array or in the list. And... Uh, and those will change to one as each of the queries is done because we're not going to wait for a query if it's still running. Uh, we're going to skip over to the next query um, and, you know, to get the result. And so they're going to be filled in in different orders. And so we want to capture that um, as, our, uh, uh, as our process goes here. So I'll open a Snowflake connection. I'm going to, uh, we're going to do a try accept. And finally, um, uh, block here, just because uh, uh, if we end up with a screw up, and I probably will screw it up, um, <laughs> uh, I want to make sure that my Snowflake connection is uh, closed. 
Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do some error trapping here. Um, so I'm gonna paste in. This is uh, the credentials I used in the previous uh, videos. Those snow user, snow pass, and snow account. Those are variables that are up above the import statements, and you know that I scrolled off there, so you guys can't see it. Um, but uh, the the warehouse database and schema. Those are. It's good idea if you know where you're going to be working and which warehouse and database put those into your connection so that you go directly there and you don't need to use the you know use this database use that database use the schema type of thing once you're in there um, so i'll create a cursor uh, cs equals cnn dot cursor and then i'm going to set my process complete equal to zero and my the number of passes so process pass equal to zero because um, I am going to, you know, in case something oddly goes wrong and a query gets hung up or whatever, I'm going to stop trying after about 10 passes. Um, then we'll start a, a loop again and we'll go uh, for query, uh, uh, query and query. <laughs> and I can get the SQL statement using iLook, which is using the index uh, of, our, of our data frame. So that'll be the, the zero row with the zero column. Um, and then I'll say cs.execute uh, async, and that kicks off the asynchronous uh, query uh, in, with using the SQL that we grabbed from the data frame. And then the query, uh, we're going to set our query uh, equal to the uh, cursor.sfq ID, which is the, the ID of the query. So, so basically, it's just saying, you know, uh, for the, if say it's the, the first row uh, first query it's going to be zero so it'll be uh, query uh, and then qry is zero is equal to um, in our list is equal to the first id and then and then the second id and then the third id um, so it's going to execute all of those so at this point we've executed all three queries and we've got the id back for each of those into our list uh, called query q u e r y and then once those have been kicked off, uh, we can go ahead and we can start our while loop and we'll say while process complete is equal to zero, we're gonna set an item number equal to minus one. That'll get incremented to zero as we go through. Our pass, we're gonna, we're gonna increment by one. So uh, we'll start you know, recording the number of passes that we make and then, uh, and then once we've got that in there, then we'll go, you know, if, if the sum of uh, our complete array is equal to the number of queries, then quit. Uh, or if it's 10 passes, then quit. Uh, you could do 100 passes while you're waiting or whatever, and, and we'll talk about putting a time delay in there so that you're not hammering the server. But uh, uh, we'll go process complete uh, is equal to one, uh, and that will actually stop if That'll stop the uh, while loop, and, it'll, and that'll be the end of the uh, end of the program there. Um, but in the meantime, what we'll do is uh, we'll go for uh, result in query. Uh, so that's going to be uh, the IDs that are in query. So it'll be each of the IDs that has come been passed back. Uh, we'll increment our item number, um, so it'll be zero on the first pass. And then we'll go, you know, if, if it's complete, um, that item is complete, um, then, uh, or not incomplete, I should say, then uh, we go ahead and try to get it. Um, so th because this might have multiple passes, you know, the first one might not complete. Uh, say the first query, you might skip it because it's still running and get the other ones. Um, and so as we go through this loop, we'll say, you know, if this one's com not complete, then go ahead and get it. But otherwise, leave it as, as incomplete as a zero. Um, or as a, if you do finish it, mark it as a one, and then it'll be skipped next time. Um, so here we go. Uh, we'll print the result for, um, and then I put the result ID in there um, so you can see it. And then the status. Uh, will be, you know, a connection, get query status, and we'll put that result ID in there. And if that status is equal to uh, query status dot success, I just converted it to a string just so you can see that. Um, then uh, if 
if it has been completed on the server, um, then get the records. Um, so we'll set, first of all, we'll say our complete item, uh, that number is set to one. So uh, query one, zero, one, two in this case. So it could be complete zero is equal to one. Um, and we'll set that marker and then we'll go CS, uh, get results from SFQ ID. And then the ID is the result. So that's gonna request that ID that was started asynchronously before it's going to go ahead and, and go get that data. So we'll say our records, uh, uh, that's equal to our cursor fetch all. And then, you know, I'll just, for now, I'll just go for uh, record in Rex. Uh, we'll print the record. And you could do some other Excel stuff here, you know, populate your graphs or whatever. I don't, I don't know what you're doing there, but, um, but that would basically finish that part of it. And you know, make note. You know, as that as that's happening, you're doing some stuff. The other queries are still completing, and so uh, this is going to actually grab the first queries that are done that it finds, uh, and so it'll it should grab them in the order that they're done, um, or very very close to the order that they're completed. Um, and so I'll finish off our block here, uh, our try except finally structure here and I'll just say accept exception as E and we'll print off the, the exception if we get one uh, and then we want to make sure we put a finally in there uh, for uh, cnn.close which will which will basically say you know we're done uh, it'll close off our connection so we don't leave any connections open now I could uh, try and run this um, I don't think that I have any errors in here but there's probably one that I haven't seen yet uh, but we'll we'll just kick it off and see what we get, um, and uh, I'll just hit F5, and uh, oh, I gotta save it, and then let's see what we get. Uh, okay, uh, okay, I've got oh, I didn't uh, define CNN uh, is not defined. Uh, oh, okay, that's because I've got the wrong uh, connection in there. Hang on. It is actually snowflake.connector.connect, not snowflake.connection.connect. <laughs> so I better uh, put that one in there, connector.connect. And, uh, and that should do it. We'll hit F5 again and see what we get. So it says three queries opening uh, Snowflake. And it looks like that first query just happened super fast. So I'll save you the, the agony of waiting for that. and. Uh, there we go. So, and then the second two happened right after. So, in that case, it got the first 10,000 records of that first one, and then it, those other two queries are little tiny queries, and what they were all executed asynchronously, but they happened in order. So, what I want to do is, I want to make that first query really slow compared to the other ones. Uh, so, what I'll do is, I think I'll adjust it. It must have been cached, maybe, or, or something, but I'll, it was super fast. That actually went super fast. So what I'll do is I'm going to change it, and I set it to the first 20,000 instead. So let's see what we get this time. So there you go. So that you could see those slower ones, they actually popped up first because the longer query ended up um, taking too long. It was still running when we checked the status. So the, if I scroll up here, you, oh, I went too far. If I scroll up to the beginning of the, uh, of the set here, the order that these were executed in, you can see that it actually did query two and query, th or pardon me, I guess zero, one, and two. So it did number one and number two first. Um, so you can see it, it checked that first one, but it was too slow. It was uh, still running. And then it went on to the other ones, and it uh, did those ones uh, next. So it did uh, query one and query two, um, and query zero. It did that one last because uh, it, and it actually checked it a few times. You can see it did that loop a few times. It did like three passes, uh, three additional passes there, and then finally the query was done. It grabbed it, and away we went. Now that was kind of hammering the server a little bit there because it was going, you know, is it done, is it done, is it done? So we can put a time delay in there so it doesn't, you know, uh, you know, hammer it that badly, you know, so we don't uh, t 
totally hammer the server uh, with repetitive queries if we know that something's running we'll give a little bit of a delay each time that it checks um, so what we could do next is we could put you know uh, an else on our if statement you know so if query dot status dot if query status dot success is not found if it if query status dot running is found um, then we'll do a sleep we'll just give it a little bit of a break before it goes around and checks again um, that'll create a little bit of a delay on some of our queries um, you know uh, but it sort of spreads things out a little bit and you're not co continuously uh, hammering the server and so now if I'm running it uh, you can see um, it says three queries oh it got the big one right away again so I'll pause it just to jump to the end here there we go uh, okay so it did the first and then the second and then third which was zero one two um, in order uh, which is uh, you know that's fine too uh, but we do want to make that do a pause and also uh, and we want to do it out of order uh, to show that it, it'll go out of order and get the faster ones first as it goes through so in order to do that I'm gonna jump back to my Excel sheet and change my query but just before I do that I'll go ahead and I'll delete the uh, the rows that print out the records we don't need to see them this time I'll just output the query number in order of execution or in order of collection I should say um, and uh, so I'll say query and then the uh, query item uh, and uh, that that'll tell you as we loop through here it'll tell you you know the order that it was uh, collected so there we go uh, we've got a time sleep in case of uh, if it you know if the query was running we'll give a little break in case uh, it comes back to that one it'll give a little break each time before it checks and then we can uh, go ahead and change the Excel sheet I'm gonna make this uh, harder to you know, I'll say I'll change the, maybe I'll change the operator and get a different data set. Um, say less than uh, two million in this case. I think that's two million. Yeah. So let's get the top twenty thousand uh, from there, and then the other two little queries I'll leave the same. I'll save that, and uh, and I'll run it. I'll do an F five here, and uh, we'll see what we get. So. Um, let's go ahead and hit that and uh, so we've got three queries opening there's the result for each of those and so it did not get the first one first it did uh, query one two and then zero um, so you can see that it's grabbing the ones that are uh, smaller first as it goes through and loops through each time until everything is complete and that is how you can do asynchronous select queries against snowflake Interested in some behind the scenes and uh, cool articles? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on asynchronous select queries against Snowflake. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell when you see the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.